God, thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. We thank you, Lord, once again for bringing us back to this virtual Bible study of the Isle of Patmos Baptist Church located here in Northeast Washington, D.C., where our pastor is Bishop Calvin L. Matthews. Thank you, Pastor. I want to thank everyone behind this virtual Bible study scenes, and, and let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, the creator of us all, we come before you, Lord, to thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, Lord. Lord, we thank you for salvation, for sending your only begotten Son here to take our place in sin, to die in our place of sin, Lord, that we may have a right to the tree of life, and we may live life now and live life more abundantly. Father God, right now on this day, we ask that your spirit will come and lead us and direct us and, and, and let us know what we should know about your word. Reveal to us what your word is saying to each one of us to hear your words, Lord. Each time we read your word or hear your word, reveal it to us, Lord. Let us get a little closer to you. Lord, we pray that we all will have more faith. We ask you this prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, today we are in 2 Kings chapter 9 of the Old Testament of the um, Bible. Last week we had just finished up 2 Kings chapter 18. And remember, last week the Assyrians officials, they ridiculed Judah and Hezekiah's faith in the true God. They demanded that that uh, Judah would be. They demanded that Judah to surrender and be deport and for deportation. But today, today we will study what Hezekiah did in response to the Assyrians' officials' message. Okay, and let's try to uh, um, receive some of this word of the Lord how Hezekiah had responded, okay? Talk about, uh, uh, these first set of scriptures talk about um, Jerusalem's uh, deliverance foretold. Let's listen to the words of the Lord. I'll be reading that 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 through 5. I'll be reading the New International Version of the Bible. Some folks know it as the NIV version of the Bible. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 1, and it reads, When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shabnah, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, this is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and, re and rebuke and disgrace. As when children come to, to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them, it may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. Now, speak on that a little bit, real quick. Hezekiah was distressed. He was distressed. And, 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 and he sent his officials to Isaiah. To, for guidance from the Lord. Isaiah was a prophet of the Lord, of the true God. Okay, he sent his officials there to Isaiah. And Isaiah's fame and influence was great in Israel. It was known, it was, it was, it was well known that the word of the Lord was with him, was with Isaiah. Okay, the man of God. Um, verse 5. Verse 5. When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you heard. Those words 
with which the underlines of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. Listen, when, you, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, and there I will have him cut down with the sword. When the field commander heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting in Libna. Libna. Verse 9. Now Sennacherib received a report that Tehaka, the king of Cush, Cush, was marching out to fight against him. So, so he again sent messengers to Hezekiah with this word. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on. Do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says, Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you, were, you have heard that what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely, and, and will you be delivered? Did the gods of, of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozad, Haran, Resep, and the people of Edom who were in Tel Asur. Where, where is the king of Hamath or the king of Arpad? Where are the kings of La? Seth Sephapharion, Hannah, and Ava. Tongue twisters. Let me speak on that. Now Isaiah, as we read, Isaiah, he sent a good answer and predicted the destruction of the king of Assyria and his army. Assyria was a world power, but could not conquer Judah. So Nacaria heard that the kingdom was invaded by the Ethiopians and sent a letter to Hezekiah to get him to surrender. Okay, now, we're going to get into some of Hezekiah's prayer. Verse 14. Hezekiah received the letters from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubims, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Get, open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrians' kings had laid waste these nations and their lands, they had thrown their gods into fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, Luti. They were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord our God, deliver us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. Yes. Yes, let me, let me say a few words about that. After, after Hezekiah received the letters from the Assyrian king, he went to the temple, the house of the Lord. He went to the temple and spread the letters before the Lord and praise a fervent prayer. We must, we must never fail to pray when crisis comes. A matter of fact, we should always pray. Yes. We should pray continuously, all times. Put the Lord before us in all things that we do. <clears throat> and, and also, Isaiah, he prophesies in Sennacherib's fall. Okay, verse 20. Verse 20. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is the word that the Lord has spoken against him. Virgin daughter Zion despises you and mocks you. Daughter Jerusalem 
tosses her head as you flee. Who is it who have ridiculed and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lift your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have ridiculed the Lord, and you have said, with my many chariots, I have ascended the heights of the mountains, the utmost heights of Lebanon. I have cut down the tallest cedars, the choices of its junipers. I have reached in remote parts the finest of its forests. I have dug wells in foreign lands and, and drunk the water there. With the soles of my feet I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago I ordained it. In the days of old I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass that you have turned fortified cities into piles of stones. Their people drain the power and are dismayed and put to shame. They are like plants in the field, like tender green shoots like grass sprouting, sprouting on the roof scorch before, the, before it grows up. But I know where you are and when you come and go and how you rage against me because, you're, because you rage against me and because your insulin, your insulin, ins, insulin has reached my ears I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth and I will make you return the way you came. This is, this is a sign for you, Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows itself the, and the second year what springs from that. But in the third year sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more, a remnant or of the kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of, Is of Assyria. He will not enter the, this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it and shield with shield or, or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that, that he came, he will return. He will not enter this city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. Wow, the Lord is right there with him. Let me say this. Isaiah, what well, we went over, Isaiah sends Hezekiah to assure him that his prayer is heard by God, that Jerusalem will be delivered and the Assyrians will be destroyed. Good enough. Jehovah shows that, that what Sennacherib had done was done by divine appointment. It was because God had appointed them to the civil destruction that he had overcome the nations and not through his might. God gives Hezekiah a sign. We read that. God gave Hezekiah a sign. Sennacherib probably prevented the land from being harvested that year and the next year was a year of rest for the land. But God shows them that he would bless the land to grow and be significant to supply food during the two years. As, as we went over back in a uh, um, couple of verses back, 2 Kings 9, chapter 19, verse 29, 30. Okay, it verifies that. Okay, verse 35. Verse 35 reads, That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He turned to Nivea and stayed there. He 
he returned to Nivea and stayed there. One day, while he was worshiping in the temple of his God, Lord Jesus, his God, Nisro, his sons, Adramalak and Asher, Asherizer, Asherizer, killed them with the sword, and they escaped to the land of Arafat. And Iskaharadan, Iskaharadan, his son, succeeded him as king. And that concludes the reading of um, chapter 19, 2 Kings chapter 19. But let me say this, that, as we just read, that night, the angel of the Lord killed 185,000 in the Assyrian camp, and Shanachabir, he returned to Nivea, where he came, just as the Lord said, and was slain by his own sons. Wow. It pays to serve the Lord. Yes, it does. So, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word once again, Lord. We thank you for your word that will lead us and guide us. Lord, we pray that all that hear your word will receive your word and receive you as the giver of the word and will abide by your word, Lord. For, Lord, there's life in your word, there's health in your word, there's power in your word. Lord, there is no weapon formed against us where possible with you on our side is more than the world against us. So, Lord God, we just pray to you that you stay with us. Stay with us, Lord. Lead us, guide us in the way that we should go. We ask you this prayer in the matchless and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Our soul says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.